What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a new deck that just came out in Power of the Elements that's going to be taking the meta by storm and that is Sprite. This is one of the most anticipated decks of the format and this deck is just so so powerful in so many different ways. Now just before we get into the video though I do want to say two things. One, like the video and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already because there is a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh! content here on the channel. We upload five days a week so you guys can see a ton of that. But two, I want to say that there is a ton of different ways to build Sprite. So the build that I'm going to be showing you in today's video is the build that I've been testing and the build that I've seen the most success with. I've tested a bunch of different builds, but this build is the one that I like the most. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I don't want to take up too much of your time with that. Let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get into the deck profile, I do want to say one thing. This deck, there's so many ways to play it. And the reason for that is because there's so many level two rank two engines in the game. So you can do so many different things. I've seen the nimble package. I've seen, of course, you guys are seeing here the diva package. There's so many different packages. So every deck profile you're going to see is going to be a little bit different. However, I do want to say that I've been testing with a bunch of different builds. And this is the build that I've enjoyed the most. I've had the most success on. And this is a build that I think is very, very powerful. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind because I think it's very important to know that Sprite, there's so many different builds for Sprite. So this is just what I've been doing and what I've been thinking is the most powerful for me, right? So here we're playing three Sprite Blue, of course. And for anyone who doesn't know, I'm just gonna explain this real quick. All the Sprite monsters have the same effect where essentially if you control a level or a rank two monster, you can special summon them from your hand. And then they all have a separate effect when they're special summoned. Blue has the effect to search any Sprite monster from your deck. So this is essentially a Rota from your deck, which is really nice. And then you have three Sprite Jet. Jet searches a spell or trap card from your deck. So of course here, just right there, you have six searches in your deck, which is so insane. This deck is so consistent and these cards just make it even more consistent, of course, right? You have a monster searcher, spell trap searcher, and then we're playing two red as well as one carrot. What these ones do essentially is red is a monster negate and carrot is a spell or trap negate. So not only does this deck have its own consistency, it has its own built in negation, which is really, really good. So that's why we're playing two red and one carrot. And then since we were talking about consistency, let's get even more consistent because we're playing three sprite starter it's obviously just a starter for the deck but on top of that it's an e-telly essentially that's the really cool thing about this card it's an e-telly for the deck and any deck that essentially has a built-in e-telly is just so powerful so sprite starter of course just boosts the consistency even further you guys can see you have a monster searcher spell trap searcher just an e-telly so this sprite engine is always going to be accessible and there's just so many powerful cards in this engine but speaking of powerful cards i am playing two sprite smashers now a lot of builds i've been seeing are only playing one i actually like playing two because i think this card is insanely powerful also you guys can see we're playing desires in the deck so that's why i do like playing the second one because you don't want to banish your only copy but another reason you want to play two sprite smashers is because if you open in your hand a sprite smashers but you don't get to see a starter then essentially your sprite jet can search your starter if you see a starter and you don't see a smasher your sprite jet can search your smasher so the reason i like playing two of these is because it does actually give you a higher chance to draw it in your hand which is actually kind of sometimes a good thing because then you're never going to be in a situation where you're like do i search this one or do i search this one right so that's why i really like playing two sprite smashers but if you guys don't know what this card does essentially you can banish in this case it's going to be a sprite it can be Therion or spriggins as well but in this case it's going to be sprite you can banish a sprite monster from your graveyard or hand and then you can banish our level or rank two monster that you control and a card your opponent controls any card your opponent controls it can banish so that's why i think sprite smashers is really good especially in today's format where tier elements are probably going to be very very powerful so so tier limits are going to be one of those decks that Sprite Smashers is just really good into. But of course, banishing cards isn't always good into pretty much all decks. So that's why Sprite Smashers, I think, at two is very, very powerful. Then this engine, I love this engine so much, the Deep Sea Diva engine. To be honest with you, I want them to hit this with a hand trap. Like I want my opponent, when I normal summon my Diva, to ash it or imperm it. Because if they ash or imperm my Diva, all my rest of my plays are going to go through. And the best thing about it is that if they don't have ash or imperm and this card resolves, you're in such a good position because you're pretty much getting Hulk access if you want, Gigantic Sprite access if you want, Sprite Elf access if you want. There's so many different cards in your extra deck that this just provides you if it resolves. So if this card resolves, you're in such a great position. But honestly, it doesn't matter. You want your opponent really to hit this because if they hit this, Keep in mind, like I said earlier, all the sprite monsters can be special summoned just if you control a level two monster. So if I go normal summon Deep Sea Diva, 
and they go imperm and then i go okay special sprite blue sprite blue effect and now my full combo still goes off because i can get access to my gigantic sprite and i don't have to worry about this getting hit with an imperm i don't have to worry about my spite elf getting hit with an imperm so that's why it's just kind of one of those things where deep sea diva is just such a good card because worst case but also kind of best case it gets hit with a hand trap if it gets hit with a hand trap you are still good to go and then of course we're playing the frog package the frog package is just way too strong three swap frog one dupe as well as one ronin i tried at one point to play two dupe funny enough because i was like hey what if we dupe lock our opponent but uh yeah no that never really came up so yeah one dupe is perfectly fine three swap one dupe one ronin i think this is pretty self-explanatory then the rest of the cards because as you guys can see this engine right here is just so much consistency so the rest of the cards are just essentially just to beat the meta so here we're playing three ash blossom of course ash is the most generic hand trap it's good into pretty much anything but one hand trap that's going to be really good in today's format is three dd crow so if you think about one of the decks that's going to be meta and i think is going to be very very good this format is tier Limits, and they need their cards to be in their graveyard to fusion summon and resolve properly so dd crow is going to be one of the best hand traps into that deck but dd crow generically is just really good into a lot of decks other than exo sister i guess because if you dd crow a despia player on their branded in red then they can't resolve that even stuff like sword soul where dd crow might not be the greatest into sword soul if they only have one worm monster and they normal summon a taie if you go dd crow on that worm monster their tie is useless or if they try to set up the tenyi package and you see that they have a vishuda in the graveyard or an ashuna in the graveyard you don't want it to resolve you dd crow it dd crow is just one of those cards that's just so good into so many different decks other than against exorcist you have to be playing this against any other deck essentially and then obviously if you do play the exorcist matchup you just side them out so yeah you're playing three dd crow this card's nuts and then we're playing three gamma and one driver of course now the reason i like to play three gamma and gamma is just so good is one it's a level two which is really good obviously just for your sprite monsters in itself but also we have three emergency teleport three e tele means i'm always gonna have access to gamma now what's really cool and i've had this happen before is i've activated e tele right my opponent will go ash or something like that on it and then i'll go gamma because i already have a gamma in my hand so now my gamma is going to resolve my e tele is going to resolve so essentially i'm going to have two gammas and a driver on my side of the field two gammas essentially gives me access to gigantic sprite if i needed to but it also gives me access to omega as well it gives you access to Hulk as well so i really like the gamma package especially like it's with sprite starter there's just multiple different things that your opponent can activate a hand trap on that you can gamma right and then here the next card that i was going to talk about was part of desires because if i go desires that's a card that's most likely going to get ashed a lot of people like to ash desires and then you go gamma right so there's a lot of cards in the deck that gamma is just so good protecting essentially but going second gamma is also really good and i completely skipped over called by we're playing one called by i think this card is just way too nuts in today's format or in any format in general to be honest with you so we're playing the one called by and of course like i said the three Itali, the two potted desires these are very good cards that are going to get you access to your starter so like if you go emergency teleport with any sprite monster in your hand you essentially have your full combo anyways right so not only are you playing three sprite starter which is an Itali for sprites you're also playing Itali for gamma so this deck is just so consistent in that sense and then we are playing three forbidden droplet it's 41 cards in the main deck the 41st card was the second smashers i was playing 40 forever but i was like man i really want the second smashers couldn't cut anything else so i was like you know what we are playing 41. So that's it for the main deck. I mean, this deck, I'm going to be honest with you because I know I'm going to have a budget player say like, hey, this deck is really expensive. It is. I'm going to be honest with you. It's not a cheap deck. However, I will say this. If you guys want a budget alternative to Forbidden Droplet, you guys can play Forbidden Chalice here. Chalice is a really good card in today's format. You guys can play Imperm here as well. Imperm is also another really good card in today's format. So just keep in mind, this can just be another hand shot. For anyone who's curious or doesn't have their hands on droplets or doesn't have access to it, don't worry. You guys can play another hand trap in this slot. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a budget option for the droplets. So moving on to the extra deck here, you guys can see I have some stuff in my side deck here that I'll talk about in a second, but let me just talk about the cards that you essentially need, and that is two Gigantic Sprite and one Totally Awesome. Now I'm only playing one Toad, okay? I was playing two for a while, but the second one barely ever came up, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to cut it to one, make some space for extra cards in my extra deck. So two Sprite and one Toad is perfectly fine for me. It's been working so well. Then we're playing the one Gin Buster. This card's really good. It's essentially a monster negate, but it also does burn damage. And you know how time rules are in today's format. So burn damage is always going to be a really good thing. And then we're playing the one. Okay, so this is a card that I don't see in a lot of builds, but I think I really like this card. So... It's called Obinamaru or Onimaru. I'm saying that wrong, I'm going to be honest with you. But I'll read its effect real quick. You can detach a material from this card, 
target one monster opponent controls and then banish it until the end phase that's really good into a lot of boards it's essentially just a banish on summon and then if this card is destroyed you can target banish monsters up to the materials it had when it was destroyed and shuffle them back into the deck so essentially you're getting rid of your opponent's cards just with this effect but the nice thing is it takes two plus level two monsters so you don't have to use two you could potentially use three and then just banish and shuffle more cards back so that's a really cool thing about this card i really really like it it's one of those cards that people aren't playing but i think it's really really good when it comes up and then we're playing of course one cat shark we're playing one centuria as well as the zeus so that's it for the xyz monsters i really like this lineup i don't think i would change it up and then we're playing two sprite elf of course one dark one phoenix phoenix is really cool because you can pop a back row but then use the phoenix for a gigantic sprite so that's why i really like playing the phoenix one hulk hulk just gets you extra bodies on board like if you go into hulk with your diva you can summon another diva from your deck and then you can keep going from there so i do like playing the hulk the one all mirage as well as of course the one omega for anyone who doesn't know all mirage is really important for the frog combo it kind of makes swap frog like a one card combo so that's why i'm playing the all mirage but i want to say this okay so there's another thing that i wanted to mention and you guys can see it here i was trying ip with unicorn and axis code instead of dark nightmare as well as hulk right because there's a lot of cool things that people do with hulk i just wanted to use hulk here as an extender i didn't want to commit to a full hulk package but i do want to say that these three cards right over here originally were these three cards because ip is just so good especially to make like a unicorn and then when it comes back to you you go to access code so i really really like this package so this is just another package that i was considering i just want you guys to keep that in mind because if you guys are building the deck i would think you guys should try this package out as well there's also a part of me that was just playing ip and unicorn and cut phoenix and hulk because i think dark is just so good in today's format especially with tier limits being viable i think dark is just really really good so for that reason maybe don't cut the dark but the phoenix and the hulk are two cards i think that could be swapped for an ip and a unicorn really up to you these are just things that i've been changing around in testing and i wanted to give you guys that option as well so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy so that is my take on sprite for this format this upcoming format this is surely to be one of the best decks in today's format now keep in mind like i said earlier there is a ton of different ways to build sprite and to be honest with you i don't think there's any real wrong way to build sprite but this is the build that i've seen the most success with this is the build that i've been enjoying the most so i hope you guys give it a try for yourselves but if you guys have any suggestions any ideas or just let me know which build you're playing in the comment section down below because that's how we get better together as a community at the end of the day spanko is a community i mean i'm spanko but we the spanko squad are a community and we want to help and grow together so that's how we get better together thank you guys all for watching make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't done so already if you enjoyed the video because there are a lot of deck profiles to come a lot of combo videos dual videos product openings all that good stuff we upload five days a week here on the channel thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that spanko signing out peace